AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, who's going to be making a delicious and also beautiful recipe from my new book, Own Your Health, I wanted to tell you, thank you for your support for those who have purchased it. If you buy it by October 18th and send us your receipt, your Amazon receipt by midnight to Chef AJ Bonus at yahoo.com, we'll give you lots of bonuses, including a recipe that didn't make it in the book. One of my favorites is a double frosted vanilla carrot cake with a video and lots of recipes that didn't make it in the book and the audio version, which will be available on Audible for sale, but you'll get it for free. So today's guest is Heather Goodwin. She is from the YouTube channel, Plant Butterfly Effect, Plant-Based Weight Loss. And she contributed several recipes to this book, as did several of my friends who have YouTube channels and blogs. And she's going to be making one of them today. And it's pizza, but it's more than pizza, because when I saw her post this on her Facebook page, it's really more like art, art that you can eat. Please welcome from Portland, Heather Goodwin. Hey, Heather, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Hello, everyone. I'm so oh. honored on your show, Chef AJ. Oh, well, it is my pleasure. It looks like you're wearing a Wonder Woman apron. Yes. I am a big fan of Gal Gadot. I love her too. I do love her. Yes, she's amazing. And so I, whenever I, uh, sometimes I wonder why I'm in the kitchen. No, <laughs> so I'm Wonder Woman. But it's a, that's adorable. Oh, thank you so well, you've much. You've got some. You've got some fans on already. Bev says, "I'm I'm so proud of Heather." Hey there, Heather says. So people know you. That's fantastic because you kind of took a little break from YouTube, which I can understand. It's just yeah. sometimes it's, it's 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 kind of hard when you do it a lot, you know. Yeah, you know the the pandemic came and I actually got busier than ever, and um, because I work and everything, and it just it just needed to have a little bit of time. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're back and posting and I, and so yeah. and I'm glad you're I'm, it's so good to see you. Yes, Portland, Oregon. I didn't know there was another Portland to be from. <laughs> There's Maine. Oh, yes. I That's should have specified. That's right. You're th thank you. I've never been very good at geography. Robin says, Heather's very brave. I'm proud of her. Etta says, I love, love Heather. So you got a lot of fans. So uh -huh. that's, that's great. I love me some Heather, <laughs> says Diane, says Dana. Dana Kroll. I don't have glasses. I thought Diana Kroll was watching. I'm like, I love that singer. That's amazing. Wow. So, yeah. so the, you actually made me this recipe once when you visited me in Los Angeles and it was delicious, but you're going to do something a little different with it today because you've been yeah. playing with your food. I am going to play with my food. So when I was growing up, um, every Friday was pizza night um, I came to find out later, it was just my mom didn't want to cook or my dad didn't want to cook, but it was really exciting. And then when I um, became a plant-based eater, and specifically when I started eating sofas free, I really missed pizza because when you don't eat flour um, or sugar or all the junky things that people sometimes put on pizza, then, you know, um, I, I was just missing that pizza taste. So I came up with my own pizza crust that doesn't have any sugar or any flour and it just has four very easy ingredients and it makes it really easy to play with your food. <laughs> Should we go ahead and make the crust? Absolutely. And it's oh, amazing that you right. can make a crust without flour. It's mind blowing, isn't it? Right? It's very fun. It's very fun to be able to do. And so the first thing, my first secret ingredient is cauliflower. Now, some, I love vegetables, but I know that there are some people that maybe don't love vegetables. And if this is an easy way to, I'm not going to say sneak vegetables in, but maybe add them in a way that the person might enjoy them more. So I'm going to start with one 10 ounce package of um, riced cauliflower and I'm just doing this to open up the bag um, and I don't actually think it's going to work. I'm going to get a different one. But I was just going to say, Chef AJ, that um, of course you can make cauliflower, you know, steam some cauliflower on your own and then that would be delicious in here too. It's just 
sometimes I like to push what I call like the easy button and just do it really easily. So this is going to go into a food processor. Joe, can you, um, can, does it, is it showing the food processor? I don't know if it is. There we go. All right. Then my next ingredient is either garbanzo beans or cannellini beans. Sometimes cannellini beans can be difficult to find in the store. And so I had garbanzo beans. Really, all we're doing is trying to make it white so that it'll be like a pizza crust, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and again, I could make these in my instant pot, but um, I'm just going to drain these um, can of cannellini beans. So that's a 15 ounce can. Heather, is there an option for people that either don't want to or can't eat beans for whatever reason? You can just leave them out. It does come out fine without them. And I know because I made them at your house with no beans and it just came out fine. So if you don't want to add beans, don't add them. Thank you. Just because, you know, I'm hosting this GI summit. And even yeah. though it's not a diet that people need to be on long term, some people are following a low FODMAP diet. And at least during that period, I know they can't have beans, but cauliflower is definitely something that they can have. Well, wonderful. Well, maybe next time we make it, we'll, um, where'd that butter knife go? I don't know where I put it. Here it is. Um, maybe the next time we make it, we'll do it with no beans. So uh, Apple says, are, are cannellini beans and white kidney beans the same thing? They, I think that they are. Um, you can use any white bean will work. There are beans that are just labeled as white beans. There are also, um, so the cannellini beans, you could have um, garbanzo beans. So pretty much anything that has a, a white flesh. Um, I have to say that I have a funny story. When I was staying with you in LA, which I definitely recommend that whenever you go visit someone's house, you always go to a wonderful vegan chef's house. Um, I stayed with the wonderful Eden, um, who used to be your camera woman back in LA. And she's amazing. And we had bought some purple sweet potatoes and we really wanted to make pizza, but all we had was purple sweet potatoes. So we had a purple pizza crust and it was actually very beautiful. <laughs> so you can definitely do that. But what I'm using is just a small, not very big, um, pan of yam. It's just a white flesh sweet potato. I like the, I like these for, they're just sweet and good. I'll break it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna wash my hands because it's nice and gooey. <clears throat> The Hannah yams are my favorite, even more than the Japanese or the Hawaiian. And I know that sometimes people live places where they can't get them. Oh, yes. Susan wants to know, is the cauliflower cooked? It is. It's a, um, a pre-cooked um, rice cauliflower. So it, it would be the equivalent of being lightly steamed. And um, I get these at my local Fred Meyer, which is kind of a Kroger um, affiliate, and they call them something different than what I'm used to. They call them Jersey sweet potatoes. So if you don't see Hannah Yam, you might um, look under that name. I'm just gonna move these out of our way. All right. Now I'm going to just give these a spin, these first three ingredients. And then I'm gonna pause and just scrape it down. There we go. Get that all down in there. I like these to be really incorporated well together before I put in the oats. All right, 
then I'm going to put in three cups of rolled oats. And I've actually done this with cooked oat groats and it worked okay. This you, don't, you don't really measure the yam, you just put in like a whole yam. Right, it's just, it's about, um, when I weighed them, it's about an eight ounce yam. So it's about a half a pound of sweet potato. Get that down into the blades a little bit. Because agricultural products are going to vary, right? Um, you might need to slightly adjust how many oats or how, you know, whatever you put in. Um, and that's just a good, good rule to follow. And I learned that from my favorite chef, Chef AJ. <laughs> Now, why buy a crust when you can make your own that's healthier? Because I don't think there's any pizza crusts that, that don't have flour, at least that I've right. seen in the store. Absolutely. Joe, do you um, mind taking out those um, sweet potatoes? And I'll go ahead and it's right behind you. There. Yeah, the glove is right behind you. All right. So this is what it's looking like in the food processor. And... I just want to, I'm just, my goal is just to incorporate those oats, not necessarily to grind them up. And so um, that's what we did. And then we'll just leave that on because we we will just leave it on. So I have the oven um, preheating. It's at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I get my awesome cameraman back again. All right. All right. So now comes the fun sticky part. Are you guys ready for the fun sticky part? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a round pizza cause it's more traditional. So I have this little round pizza pan and I'm gonna cover it even though it doesn't match exactly with um, a nonstick silicone mat. And then I'm going to start taking this out and putting it on there. This recipe would make probably two, um, two of these smaller size crusts, okay? So I'm just gonna be using like half of the mixture at this point. And I just continue to kind of shape it into a circle as best I can using the pan as a guide. You can also use your fingers. What I like to do is use the edge of my spatula and then kind of use this as a turntable. And you see how it's forming that kind of round. I might have to add some, add some more dough. But we, our goal is to get this dough to about a half an inch. You really don't want it too thick. Um, you know, it's great. I've made that recipe and it freezes really well after you cook it. So you yeah. can always have a crust available. It really does. And you made yours without beans, right, Chef? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't actually, now I want to make it. I haven't made it in a while. I get lazy, but it's so good. I should. And it's so easy. It's just, if you have a food processor, it's no work at all, you know, it and I always have all three of those ingredients anyway in my house. I, you know, Dana's saying, can you do it in the Vitamix? But I think without liquid, it's hard to do things in the Vitamix. Yeah, I, I yeah, I have tried it in the Vitamix and it wouldn't come out very well. <laughs> it's very sticky, right? You're dealing with three extremely sticky ingredients. And you see how using that as kind of like a turntable is making it have a nicer shape. And then I just put that down again. 
That's cool. BK says you don't add any spices to the dough. You probably could if I you know. wanted to. You could, I, though, I bet. And I'll tell you why. I like it to be, I, I used to. I used to add garlic and I used to add Italian spice. But I really like to have a clean, um, I guess, palate. And this has a really nice neutral taste. If you think about it, pizza crust doesn't typically have much taste it's just basically bread right all right isn't that beautiful I think it looks pretty darn good okay so what's going to happen next is that this is going to go into the oven at 400 for about 15 minutes let me just pop it in there and then we're going to go over to the table because of, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna make myself a little modified tripod over here. A bean pod? Yes. Love it. <laughs> um, because what we're gonna do is play with our food and have fun decorating this. Are you guys ready? This should yep. be fun. Okay. And see it pretty well. Make sure. Okay. All right. So what I did was, do you remember those afternoon? Did you ever watch those afternoon talk shows, Chef AJ? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. When I, I mean, I remember Dinah Shore and Mike Douglas. That's how old I am. And they used to, um, they would always say, they would pop it in the oven and then uh, they would take one out at the same time and they would be like, through the magic of television, I already have one ready. So, ta-da, I have one ready. And so this is a rectangle shape, right? And the reason for that is we're going to decorate this. So after I baked this for 15 minutes at 400, I took it out and I let it cool for a little bit. I let it cool almost all the way down. And that is because it really helps it release from the silicone mat. If you don't let it cool, it's still very sticky, right? So silicone is magic as long as you let your food cool down first, okay? Then once it was cooled, I flipped it over and I returned it to the oven for 10 more minutes. And so it's kind of a I guess it's a par bake because of course, after we have our toppings on it, we're going to put it back into the oven. There's two different ways to go with toppings. I mean, to go with a sauce for this. One option, um, Joe, can you hand me my spatula? It's okay if you, if you can't. One option is to do what I usually do, which is just tomato paste. And I add, thank you so much. I add one tablespoon of generic Italian spice. So it's, a, um, it, you know, it'll say like Italian blend, Frontier Organics, um, to one six ounce can of tomato paste. What I'm doing this time though, because I really want to decorate my, um, great, my cameraman's kind of helping us out there. Beautiful, thank you, Joe because I really want to decorate it, I didn't want the background red, right? And so what I'm doing is I wanted to emulate a, like a creamy garlic sauce that you might get on a pizza. And actually that used to be my favorite. I really liked creamy garlic. So what I'm gonna use for pizza sauce this time is some of my homemade hummus. So this is just exactly what um, most of us use for for hummus, we've got garbanzo beans and I cooked them in the Instant Pot. I soaked them and then I cooked them in the Instant Pot. And then I added to it um, two cloves of pressed garlic and the juice of one lemon and some Benson's Table Tasty. Um, a little bit of cumin, about a half, about a teaspoon of cumin. Um, and that's it. And I have this nice, um, hummus that is going to be my pizza sauce. Okay, so think of it as like a, a garlic white sauce. So I'm going to be spreading that 
Thank you so much, Joe. I have my cameraman, Joe. I don't know what I would do without him. So I'm just gonna spread this really evenly um, over the over the surface of my pizza. Just that's brilliant using hummus on a pizza. Yeah. So again, if you're not a bean person, you know, if you don't do beans, you could do baba ganoush and which is basically eggplant hummus, right? Um, and that is that would work very well as well to give you Basically, what I'm looking for is a nice neutral background. I didn't want a red background because I want to decorate. Okay, so just smoothing that out over there. And just, you know, take some time to try to make it look pretty if you can. Since we're going to be playing with our food and using food as art, right? So I'm sorry if it's difficult to see, but what I'll do is I will show it to the camera. That's all right. Where did you learn to decorate? You know, I was on the internet, like, um, and someone had posted a picture of beautifully decorated focaccia Italian bread. And I guess it's a, it's a tradition in Italy to decorate the focaccia really beautifully. And again, just like the pizza, so see how that's just an even layer just over all of it, right? So just like the pizza, we don't do bread, right? So I thought, that would be really beautiful on my on my pizza. And so that, that's what I do. And so one of the things, and this is a trick that I wanted to tell people at home, is go ahead and go on the internet. And so I'm just grabbing my iPad. I have it right here. And look up, hold on. There we go, unlocking it. Look up some decorated focaccias. And that will give you lots of ideas that you can that you can be inspired by, right? Let's see a different one. I like. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a neat, kind of a neat thing that you can do, and there's lots and lots of ones that you can try. And so what I thought I would share is a few of the different kinds of flowers that you can make and some ideas for how you can do flowers and stems. I've also seen, um, I thought it was pretty neat, um, one that was kind of an ocean scene. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I start with is this, ah, did I lean into it? I did. Ha! This is why I wear an apron. Wonder Woman protects me. She really is a protector. So, for the stems, I like to do green onion stems, or sometimes um, I had done a grocery order and I asked for cilantro because cilantro makes beautiful um, little tiny leaves and everything. And they said they're out of cilantro, so bummer. I didn't get a chance to get cilantro, but I really like um, onion stems too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Some tools that you're gonna wanna have handy. You'll wanna have a good knife. So I have a little knife here. I have some kitchen scissors, some kitchen shears, and I have a mandolin. You don't have to have this, but it's a really good idea because especially for, like I'm gonna be making onion flowers, little flowers out of these red onions. So pretty, can you see that? So cute. Um, you want it really thin, right? So that it'll roast well. I'm gonna pause for just a second and go take my, well, maybe my cameraman will do it. Um, take the one that's in the oven out. So thank you. It is, I'm telling you, what a great kid. I just recently had surgery. <laughs> I'm gonna brag on my kid a little bit. I just recently had some surgery and um, what a, an awesome guy. 
he just helped me so much. Um, great, so that's just cooling on the table. And um, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead with the stems. So I'm gonna take one of these um, green parts, right? I don't necessarily want that white part, but I don't wanna throw it away because I might use it for something else. And then this is too wide or it's like wider than I would like. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and find the middle and just slit it right up the middle. And then this can give me two or even more pieces. See how I have that nice little piece? All right. So that's, you, you also decorated a quiche once, didn't you? I did. It was a frittata. So, but I mean, yes. And the reason, so I started out decorating frittatas and that works really well. But I knew that my beautiful chef AJ does not do soy. And so I, and I know some other people maybe don't do soy and my frittata has a little bit of um, low fat tofu in it, reduced fat tofu. So, huh? Um, yeah. So I, that's what gave me the idea. I was thinking, you know what, this is just, focaccia is just basically almost like pizza. And so I, that made me think of my pizza dough and there you go. So I have these nice, really thin, um, pieces and I want to start by it's always good to start with the frame or you know like kind of an idea of what you want to do and so I'm going to start with putting the little stems on first from my flowers maybe do the wide part at the bottom and the more spindly part at the top we're just going to do that there is no wrong way to do this. You know, one of the things that I find really helpful during the quarantine and just the stress of the pandemic and the worry and all that kind of stuff is being creative, right? Creativity. I'm just going to show you as I go along. So I've just added a couple of stems. How's that showing up on the camera? Is that doing okay? I mean, I mean, it's far away, but I can see it even without my glasses. So that's very cool. But you, you're a crafter though, aren't you, Heather? You used to knit or maybe you still do? Knit, I love to crochet, quilt, all that kind of stuff. I'm not really that much of like a painter, but again, I don't have to be because I can just find something that I can kind of emulate and, um, you know, flat, uh, what do they say? It's a <laughs> imitation is the best form of flattery. Flattery, right? Okay. One of the things you guys know that I have the butterfly effect as my, <laughs> as the name of my channel. And I love butterflies. Here's a little butterfly made out of a red pepper. And all I did was I cut a piece of red pepper. Um, actually, this, I cut a section like that. And I made a circle and then I turned and then I just cut some pieces and made it into um, a red pepper. I mean, made it into a butterfly. I'm gonna do that again and I'm gonna make it into a flower, more of a flower. So first thing I did was I cut on a mandolin. This is a little just portable cheap mandolin. And I cut a red onion, a purple onion. I just think they're so pretty, purple onions. So I'm just going to cut one little slice of a purple onion right here. You want to do the, the small end, the, the more narrow end, because you don't want these to be too big, right? And then this is going to become one of my flowers. And it's just so easy. So I'm going to put a couple of those flowers on there. Two of these beautiful little purple onions. Okay, that's what we have so far. This is just a couple of purple onion flowers. My God, that's beautiful. It's so simple, but it's so, it's just pretty, you know, and it's fun. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make a flower. Why don't we do 
I like a I like kind of a big chunk. So this is a half of a of a red bell pepper, and I have cut it into quarters. Okay, and so I want kind of a big piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try the, as best I can to make a circle out of it. I cut off that edge. And just keep going around until you kind of get a circle. It's a little challenging just because the thing is. Oh, good idea, Joe. All right. So I've got my circle. Okay. And then just like you would, you want to just envision, you can even use a knife or even like a pen or, you know, something to kind of, I'm just gonna lightly draw a flower, just a little bit to help me when I'm cutting it. Cause I'm gonna cut it with the scissors, but I'm just trying to make kind of a, a five point flower and I don't want it to look terrible, so. You know, any scissors could be a food scissors if you don't use them for something else first. <laughs> exactly, exactly, you don't have to, um, I'm, I'm big on like use what you have, especially right now. We don't want to run to the store for every little thing because we're trying to stay home, stay safe, right? <laughs> and so um, I get my, I'm getting my groceries delivered. So this could be a tulip. So here's a little tulip. That's kind of bigger than I want. The scale is too big, but I just wanted to show, you know, you could make it, you can easily make a tulip. Um, you could make it into, let's see if we do a different one. There we go. And different, um, <laughs> different veggies and fruits want, it seems like they almost want to be different things. Does that sound silly? But they lend themselves to different shapes. So I think I will make some, I'll make some small tulips. We'll have a spring garden. So I think I'm gonna cut this in half and then angle it more like a tulip bottom. Cut it off like that and then we'll do some tulips. Who, who started this idea of decorating food? The Italians. I don't. I don't know exactly where it's from, but um, I. It's just it's a tradition that they do with their focaccia. And they, man, if you look online at some of the examples, they're just beautiful. So I think I made that a little too. Trying to make it round. Okay. My mom used to say, "Done is better than perfect." So I'm going to go ahead and decide that that one's done. And we're going to put it on a stem also. And then what do you think? Should we have an orange tulip too? Let's have it. Absolutely. I think purple onion is, that, that could be so many things when you think about it. Oh my gosh. Yes. So pretty. And so just use your finger to kind of break those membranes and get it as flat as you can before you. But I'm going to do one. I'm still not giving up on that idea of a round flower. So I'm still gonna try, <laughs> but I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make a yellow tulip. And again, the best part is if you make a mistake, guess what you can do? You can eat it. Mm. Do you know? You probably do know because you're so smart, Chef AJ, but I had no idea that bell peppers have more vitamin C than like an orange. They're one of the highest vitamin C foods out there. I believe it. So, oh. But the people that sell orange juice want you to think oranges have the most. Exactly. And, you know, we don't... Um, we do the whole fruit and nothing but the fruit. So we don't. So help, so help us God. So when did you start your YouTube channel, Heather? 
I started it in 2016. And it was before that, huh? Oh, was it before? Was it 2015? Maybe. <laughs> my my fact checker is is fact checking for me. Okay, not happy. G, G says I don't I don't know what the butterfly effect means. Well, I picked that name because of a couple of different things. I love butterflies, and the th one thing that you that I know about um, caterpillars is that they spend their whole life, I remember doing a report on that, or actually I remember seeing a show that my um, kids were watching. I'm doing a little, I'm making a little butterfly. I gotta, I gotta have a butterfly on there. How about a little yellow butterfly? It'll be my monarch. Um, watching a show and they were like, this ca a caterpillar just does nothing but eat all day long. That's what they do, right? Until they go into the cocoon. They are just eating, eating, eating. And I, at, so at one point in my life, I'm like, that is kind of a metaphor for my life. Like it's my only happy thing. Um, I was, I was broke. I was a single mom. And even from the time I was a kid, whenever I would be tired or bored or sad, cute little butterfly there, right? Um, I'm gonna put my butterfly up in the sky here. Here you go, butterfly. Anytime I felt any of those things, my um, reaction to that would be to eat. And then the other thing that really struck me about butterflies is that they um, went, did you know that when a butterfly goes into the cocoon, it doesn't just like gross, it's not, doesn't just stay like that little furry worm and it, and, and grow some wings out and come out with wings it actually becomes a goo. It completely transforms. It is um, wishy, nothing like, it completely transforms, absolutely. And so that was really meaningful to me that I wanted to transform at depth. It wasn't just about changing my appearance, but actually being a different person deep down. Um, and I knew that I was going to have to find other ways to take care of myself, right? Other than eating. So instead of experiencing an emotion that was difficult and soothing myself by eating, or even I'm finding that um, a lot of my eating before and even now, if I don't watch it, is just boredom, just entertainment. So I had to come up with other ways to be entertained. Um, just like that caterpillar, they just, all they do is, is eat, eat, eat. And so when, so to me, it's a symbol of becoming who you really are, um, changing at depth. And there's a line from a Jana Stanfield song that I absolutely loved. And she says, butterfly, this is the song. It says, butterfly, tell me again, it's all going to be all right. I can feel a change is coming. I can feel it in my skin. I can feel that I'm outgrowing this life that I've been living in and I'm afraid. And then one of the lines says, um, butterflies remind us there's magic in every life and we can become what we dream of if fat furry worms can fly. So just think of that. You can become what you dream of. If a fat furry worm can fly, you can do whatever you want to do in your life. Okay, so I'm making another stem so that I can show you another kind of flower. And um, I'm going to do this one with cherry tomatoes. I saw this and I just thought it was so pretty. So I wish I could credit all these people that um, came up with these great ideas. I picture all these beautiful Italian grandmas coming up with these neat ideas. But what I'm doing, I'll show you what I've got so far. I've got my two little onion flowers. I've got my butterfly up there. I've got a little tulip down below. So really this is just a smattering of trying out all the different kinds of, of um, flowers that you can make. Really a, like a sampler. 
Kia says, is it possible to pre-cut some of the veggies to make the design to help set, uh, save time? And, you know, I have these miniature cookie cutters. I was thinking I could do like hearts and stars. Absolutely. You absolutely could do that. And I did a little bit of that, but I want, you know, I wanted to do it with you. So I'm just keeping an eye on, I got it, keeping an eye on the time. Um, so what I did was I have some grape tomatoes and you can do them the up and down way, like a little oval way, or you can do them in half um, horizontally. And so what I'm doing is I'm just putting them, this is like the one that I put in the picture that I was showing you guys, let's see here. Where did I put it? There it is. So these are just gonna go kind of with the, I can't remember if I put the smaller ones on the bottom or smaller ones on the top, but we're just gonna make them go off of, I'll show you in just a second here. Almost like little berries or something, right? Tomato berries. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Little tableau going on. Do you see how the little tomato? Oh, wow. That is really a work of art. You're not kidding. It's starting to look a little prettier. And again, wouldn't this be a fun thing to do with kids? You know, if you want a kid to eat healthfully, one of the things that you can do is get them involved in making the food, right? So you're not only teaching them nutrition, but you're also making it much more likely, I'm just cutting a little bit, um, this is a different kind of flower, cutting a little bit on the mandolin, and I'm gonna just form a little pretty flower down here. Diane is saying it's going to be too pretty to eat. Do you know that we always say that and we have every time eaten it? <laughs> you are right. It's really beautiful. <laughs> and it never stops us from eating it. <laughs> but maybe that's just my family, right? <laughs> you know, we don't have to limit this to focaccia and quiche and pizza. You know, when you think about it, even, you know, at Thanksgiving, we always serve a big thing of just plain mashed potatoes, which are white. You could, you could decorate right. everything. Absolutely. And why not, you know, play with your food, be creative. It's a stress reducer The when you are, um, when you are being creative, you are actually putting your brain into like a theta wave, which is one of the most, um, it's one of the best kind of states for your, for your brain to be in. It's very um, healthy for you to be in that state. Okay. We're running out of time and I'm sorry. This does no, don't, don't, don't worry. We're not in a time crunch, but Linda's saying you must take a photo of it. And if you do, maybe I can put that as the thumbnail for this video. Absolutely. If you can get that to me. Absolutely. We're going to make it really pretty here. So one of the things I wanted to show you is if you don't, um, this is another alternative for a leaf um, or for a stem is I'm taking, I have some little baby spinach here. And so um, you could, one of the things you could do for a different kind of stem is you could just take the little, just de-stem it. And then you have this, then you have a nice little short stem. So I'm gonna use that. And then I'm also going to cut these down to smaller leaves. So I just take a um, piece of spinach and I'm gonna cut some small leaf shapes. See, just a teeny weeny little leaf shape. I'll show you it on there. And that's gonna make it look much more realistic. Now this is when I am telling you cilantro just looks so beautiful. Some people don't love the taste of cilantro, but man, does it decorate your, your uh, you know, Dina's saying, Dina's saying you could also do this with a dessert pizza. You totally can. And one of the things I have always liked to decorate my food, I realized, because one of the things I got really into is I made um, a tart out of, and it was a no sugar 
part and it's basically the same recipe that that you and I use when we make muffins so it's like a sweet potato and banana and um oat base and there you go just making some different shapes of leaves I don't know if people are seeing that but I'm just putting all kinds of leaves wouldn't this be fun to do with kids or grandkids I think it'd be fun to do with myself. <laughs> Absolutely. And AJ, you are a really good painter. Um, if, if I actually had some artistic ability, wow, I can just imagine. So if I, who doesn't really know how to do this kind of stuff very well, <laughs> can, make, can make some fun things, just think of someone who actually, you know, had some artistic talent. What as far as drawing. That's the thing I miss most about the pandemic is going to painting class. Yes. You did a picture of your beautiful dog, Bailey. I'm looking at it right now. I wish I, I could get up and show you. Actually, maybe I can. Hey, Charles, yeah. would you mind grabbing the painting I did of Bailey on the wall? Because we're, we're, this is an art, we're doing art, art class today. I just yeah. want to, would you mind grabbing that? That photo off the wall, not photo, that painting. This? Yep. This is Our my favorite. Thanks for mentioning that, Heather. This is the best one I've ever done. I agree. I love it so much. Look, look everybody. It's Bailey. And I'll show you the oh, real Bailey so you can compare. <laughs> I love Bailey, girl. I miss her. She gives the best kisses. See how it's starting to come together? Okay. That's incredible. Yes, Sandy's saying there's Zoom online, but I that you know I it's like I am I've never been as good at, at like cooking classes or painting class. I just I'm a kinesthetic person. I need that teacher there to kind of take my hand and show me. So, but thank you. Yes, you're right about that, and it's true. But I, I just that's the one thing that I really like in person better is 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 classes. You know, craft classes. I mean, learning classes and definitely Zoom. Oh, thank you for the uh, nice compliments. But the teachers really help a lot. <laughs> it is and you know, what I like about those um teachers for those kinds of classes is they make it not intimidating, right? Cuz we we tend to think of it as that they're that some people are artists and some people aren't and stuff, but the truth is every kid's an artist, right? And um, we all have creativity and we all have like confidence in ourselves in our artistic abilities when we're little and then somehow we lose that. And so my, I, my goal is to just play. It doesn't have to be good. Again, I can eat my mistakes. <laughs> yeah. um, we, That's what I used to love when I used to take cake decorating. You know, this was before I would, I was still eating sugar and flour is if you made a mistake, you just ate it. Isn't that, I think that's a great strategy. <laughs> but again, one thing is nice is like no flower in nature is exactly perfect, right? Like they all have like a bruised petal or, a <laughs> you know, and so this is kind of fun because it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? All right, I finally did it. I finally got some semblance of a round flower. <laughs> I, I'm laughing so hard I'm snorting because it's just so fun. It's just a, it's a really fun. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to attempt to cut the middle out of my little flower that I made. Um, you could probably use like an apple core to get a circle. I totally could. I'm just doing it with my scissors or whatever, but what I'm going to do is I have a black olive and I can make, I can make a little flower out of my, out of my uh, black olive too. That can make a little flower center. So that's another thing. Another thing you can do is put like parsley or something in the center of, of some of your flowers. And that looks really nice. Oh, that looks good. I'm pleased with that. I'm pleased. There we go. I think it needs a stem too. I'll give it a stem and then I'll show you guys. All right, my little onion stems. Hey, 
Chef AJ, uh, can you ask the crowd how many people want to want to try this now? Crowd, how many of you would like to try this now? <laughs> we call them Zimunity, uh, my community on Zoom. Yeah. Zimunity. It sounds like a Robin Williams. It kind of sounds like Jumanji a little bit. Doesn't it? Okay. So I'm going to show you what that looks like with the little, um, the little center in there. To me, it makes it look a little bit more realistic. It's starting to look, starting to kind of shape up. Huh? It's, it's, it's gorgeous. So much like, could you imagine like if you brought that to like once we can start meeting again to potlucks, if you brought that or, or to somebody's house? I did that with the frittata. I served it at things and people were like giving me undeserved praise <laughs> because it really, um, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to make, um, for my little butterfly, I'm taking the spinach leaf and I'm leaving the stem, right? And then I'm going to cut it about that long. And then I'm just going to make like antenna, just tiny little slivers of this green spinachy leaf here. See. Monica's suggesting you put a sun. I think I should. I think we need a um, so we have a little body and antenna for my caterpillar. Let's see here. I mean for my uh, butterfly. There's a cute little squirrel in my backyard that's running around and he looks almost he keeps almost like peeking in the window. I think he wonders what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> Are you safe from the, all the fires that were up there? Yes. So it, we did definitely have them, but it was one county over. Um, I am in Multnomah County and it was in Clackamas County. So if it would have hopped over the freeway, um, my son did, my son did go and buy like, supplies and stuff and we were talking about as a family like where will we go you know which family member would we want to um see and go hang out with the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take some of these um spinach leaves and just kind of make i don't know not like grass but just kind of start covering the bottom a little bit to um with kind of bigger ones just to make it more wild and wild and gardeny. Now, do, now that you live in the same city as Dr. John McDougall, do you ever run into him? I do not. First of all, he and me are being super pandemic smart. So they, <laughs> they are not going out, right? They are just being, they're being very, very careful, which I, I think is a good idea. Um, and Portland is, you know, I know you guys know, but Portland's pretty big. So he's, he lives about 10 miles away. And if he invites me over, I'll be right over. Be sure and let him, all, all of his friends, be sure and let him know Heather will be right over to help <laughs> with anything he might need. I love him. I love Mary. Um, I just, I would always be so excited when the, the new McDougal newsletter would come out. I'm just doing more leaves. That's probably boring to watch. Um, so somebody said I need a sunshine. All right, I'm gonna attempt a sunshine here. We're gonna do like a half a moon. I mean like a half a half a circle maybe. You make a whole circle and then I'll make it into a half. Um, and then yeah I think that'll work. And I would try out her recipes because she'd always, you know, that was my favorite part of the McDougal um, newsletter. I loved all the information and everything, but really the highlight was all Mary's cool recipes that your kids would actually eat. <laughs> I made one of her recipes yesterday. That's how I cut the tip of my thumb off using the mandolin. Oh. I made her, ever made her crock pot pizza potatoes? They're really good. Oh, that sounds so yummy. Okay. I don't know. I don't know about Mr. Sunshine right now. It just looks like a blob in the corner. 
maybe uh, artistic people on the chat tell me what to do to make my sunshine look better. I think I need one more onion flower. I like um, the little bit I do know about um, art is, you know, the rule of threes is a good thing. Go ahead and make um, three things that we got. Another cute little onion flower. All right, let me put that down there. And you just start to layer, you know, you want it to look like a kind of a wild garden. That one needs a stem. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions what? for the art teacher, you guys? I'm already thinking in my brain, like things that I can use for decorating, like stems uh, of strawberries. I was thinking could be like hair and just whatever beautiful. I can think. I, I can love think it. Of. Keep it coming. Keep those great ideas coming. And like spiralizing carrot could probably be like, I don't know, could be something. Yeah, I'm going to make a little um, flower out of tomatoes. Just put putting five little half of the tomatoes together. One of those um, black um, olives in the middle. I will try that right here. Just for fun. Elizabeth says, what are you using for scissors? You're actually using a food scissor. You know what? It came with a cheap target, you know, like how you get a bunch of, um, you get one of those kits that has all the spatulas and everything in it. And so these were, these were in there, but they have, I kind of like it. It has um, like a bottle opener and stuff. I don't know. It has all kinds of tools that I never use, but I think scissors are great in the kitchen. I am a big, I am a big scissorer. <laughs> Is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Derm Girl says, wouldn't that be cool if you could personally bring a hand decorated pizza to the McDougals? I know their address. I could arrange oh, for that. <laughs> I would in the door. <laughs> That'd probably, at least that'd get me in with Dr. McDougal, right? <laughs> Mary would probably be like, mm, I could make one just as good or better. <laughs> Well, I imagine you probably could use, if for some reason people couldn't find a hand yam, you probably could use a regular potato. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say that. So some people have asked me, why do you use sweet potato, Heather? Why not just like a potato, right? Um, and the reason was when I was using the red sauce, the pasta. So when you have pizza, of course, pizza is completely SOS, right? Like typical American pizza is um, flour oil, sugar in the sauce, in the pizza sauce. And so when I first made the pizza and I did make it with a regular potato, it just was like, I, it, I tasted good, but I was like, I think it's supposed to be sweet. I feel like the potatoes, I feel like the pizza sauce is supposed to be sweet. So then I tried adding, you know how recipe creation goes, right? Chef AJ, we just, we just try stuff till something works, right? You know what they say, throw enough poop against the wall till something sticks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I like that. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it just didn't, it was, it was not quite right. And then I thought, you know what it is, is it's pizza sauce is usually um, sweet. And so to get the sweetness, instead of putting some kind of sugar in the pizza sauce or I even I tried it with a date that just made it too sweet it also changed the color and made it a weird color so I came up with using the sweet potato and it imparts that gentle just a tiny bit of sweetness you don't want it overwhelming right because pizza is mostly a savory dish um but there we go here's another here's a tomato flower for y'all it's kind of cute with the with the olive in the middle. Oh, right. keeps getting more beautiful. Ah, shucks. So I I don't know. I will just like um, I won't keep you guys on here, but I just keep 
working on it till the thing is loaded down. Like you saw my other one that I did. I just like to keep putting lots and lots of flowers. I like to put some little tiny ones, um, some bigger ones, all the different things. Oh, I didn't even do my, another thing I like to put on there is sun-dried tomatoes. I also like to do mushrooms. One time I made a little squirrel with mushrooms. <laughs> I just, just kind of freehanded a little, a little squirrel. So these are just some sun-dried tomatoes. No, um, of course, no oil. Oil is the devil. <laughs> we don't want oil. But you can make with the little sun-dried tomatoes. These make kind of a, a fun little, I don't know, like a rustic. Let's see where I can put, I already have used red a lot. So I'm just trying to find a spot to do my little sun-dried tomato flowers. These are kind of more bindly. Let's see. Maybe in the middle. Yeah. You've got to take a picture, please, and post it and send it to me. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. We can do it. And so, like I said, I could just, I, I won't keep the audience, but I could just keep working on this for the whole afternoon. It's just meditative and fun and um, delicious. But you, you won't cook it though now, Heather, right? You're not going to cook it with the decorations no. on it. I actually do. You do. Absolutely. So uh, the last thing that you do is you have it in the oven for, um, at 100 or about now, sometimes, um, I've tried it under the broiler. I didn't like it as well. Um, but I'll put it in the oven for just like 10 minutes at 400 again. And it comes out just perfect. Cause I don't, I don't care for raw onion. Right. And so it kind of just, it gives it that rustic look and it makes the, um, it makes everything kind of sink into the hummus a little bit. So that's why you're only par baking the, um, the crust. The crust is not completely baked. It's half baked. Oh yeah, Bev is saying black beans could be fun to decorate with. They could be, I could, yeah, they, that would be cute. Like, a, like, like little, like be like the poop if you make a little dog. Or oh my god! Yeah, I could have made. I could have <gasps> made and El Elizabeth's saying they're fabric scissors that have, um, like jagged edges. Maybe they could be used like to, oh. to cut vegetables. That's a great idea. I have some pinking shears. And uh, I'll, you know, it's like, there's just, there, the main thing I want to say is, especially adults, we do, we just um, are so like hung up on doing things perfectly. And um, there's no wrong way to do this. Whatever you do, people will be impressed. <laughs> and, and you know, if like, I was thinking like, uh, the holidays are coming, people might be baking pumpkin pies. And yeah. A lot of times they crack and they're not so pretty. You could do this technique. You know, it doesn't have to be vegetables. It can be fruit. You could decorate anything like this. Or you know? cookie. Put some gingerbread cookie decorations on the top of that pumpkin pie, right? I have a gingerbread cookie that's SOS free. Um, that sounds really good too. All right. All right. Well. I don't want to bore the audience. I could keep going and going and going. But if you'd like, talk about your channel a bit. Like, uh, what what's the content? How I've been posting the link. How often do you make a video? Yeah. So what I'm doing now is a little different than what I was doing. So, um, I have a I have like basically I like to do three things on my channel. One is I like to share recipes just like this. I'm not a professional chef like Chef AJ. I'm just a mom who likes to eat and <laughs> who likes really yummy food. And so most of the time I make Chef AJ's recipes and stuff. But one of the things I learned from Chef AJ is just be adventurous and try new things. You know, 
Um, when you go to Chef AJ's house, which I definitely recommend that you do, <laughs> you will find that she's always trying, I mean, just always trying something new and coming up with great ideas or she'll see something that's a sad, like a lot of my my favorite of your recipes, AJ, are you, you used to like a sad food and you think, oh, how can I get the, you know, how can I have this in some other form that would be healthy for me? Right. And so, um, I, that's what I did too. Like, what do I miss? I miss pizza. I miss decorating cookies at Christmas time. How can I m make cookies that are healthy cookies? I miss, um, there's just a, you know, I miss cast, I miss casseroles. So I've made quite a few casseroles, that kind of thing. So that I like to, that's one of the things I like to do every Wednesday. I do weigh in Wednesday. And so when I say weigh in this, the other thing is I can almost go vertical with this and it's not going to fall off. It's nice and stuck right into that hummus. So and, cool. Yeah, it's great. It's really fun. And so I'll just, right before I want to eat it, I'll stick it back in the oven for when I'm done decorating it. Cause I'm, I'm telling you, this is almost like when you were a little girl, did you ever have color forms? They were called color forms and it was just like a blank piece of white, um, waxed. It was like had a coating on it. And then there were little shapes that were all different. Yes, I loved those so much. I, I I wonder if they still have them. That is what this reminds me of. This is playing with your color forms again, right? Except for it's delicious. And what a great way to introduce kids um, to healthy food and to have them have a positive Im impression of it. And, you know, all, we're just big kids, right? <laughs> so we can, we can have fun too. Um, so on Wednesdays, I do a weigh-in Wednesday. Um, I, once upon a time, I weighed 436 pounds and I joined Chef AJ's Ultimate. I had tried a lot of things before I found Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss Program. And I had taken off, um, I, I think when I started my channel, I was like 360 pounds. So I had taken off some of the weight, but I was, um, then somebody asked me, have you heard about chef AJ? And I had not heard about chef AJ. So I looked, um, online. She's like, Oh, you got to check out chef AJ. She's amazing. And her recipes taste great. And they're no sugar and no, uh, <laughs> they're no sugar, no oil and no salt. And I thought to myself and no flavor. I am like, can't, it, it can't taste good. It can't possibly taste good. Right. And she's like, no, they taste amazing. Wait till you taste it. It's a, it's a miracle, you know? <laughs> and so of course I had to, I chef stalked you. You had the chef and the dietitian and you had all these wonderful recipes online and actually they're still online, right? On your channel. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I just, have any of you guys ever just dived face forward into YouTube and, and, uh, watched, every, you know, you find somebody new and you just watch everything they've ever made. And so I was her little, I was your fan girl, chef AJ. Um, but I started eating your recipes and I started talking, uh, making them for my family and my family loved it too. And the weight started really coming off really quickly and I joined Ultimate Weight Loss, the um, group, and I actually, for the first time in my life, I reached my goal weight. I took off a total of 303 pounds because I followed the principles that you laid out. So if you are wondering if it works, my friends, it does. <laughs> and then, um, you know, life happened and I ended up um, making, we talk a lot about it in UWL, making exceptions, right? I started making exceptions. And because um, when I was following UWL, I was feeling relief from my compulsive eating tendencies. I was feeling I had that calm, stable brain 
that we love that is it where your brain isn't constantly asking you for another treat, another treat. Um, but when I started making exceptions and eating junky vegan food, it all came back. And I love that. I've heard, have you guys ever heard that expression when, when you're being compliant, you know, when you're being abstinent, your addiction is over in the corner doing push-ups. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't completely go away. It just is. Um, it's just hanging out waiting for you to have a weak moment. Right. And so um, I did end up gaining back a lot of the weight, I'm proud to say I've kept off 110 pounds, right? That's not nothing. Nope. <laughs> um, and I, and it also reminds me that I did it before. And at any moment that you choose, you can make another choice, right? So I like to think of the weight loss journey as you're on this narrow path. And it's about two feet wide. And then on either side of you could be a drop off of three or four feet, right? So you're on this narrow path with the, with a ditch on either side. And what that tells you is when you're doing perfectly on the path, you're always like, you need to stay. Addiction is a wily thing, right? From what we know about addiction, we need to stay really vigilant and we need to not make exceptions because even when you're doing perfectly on your path, you're only two feet away from being in the ditch at any moment, right? I got kind of cocky. Oh, I'm doing great. I, I'm not in the ditch. On the other hand, when you fall and you're in the ditch, you're also only two feet away from being back on the right path. You can get right back on track the very next moment that you choose. How about now? Now would be a great time, right? Spend the afternoon instead of eating something that you'll regret, make yourself a nice compliant pizza and spend the afternoon decorating your food and having fun with your friends and watching Chef AJ and learning from all the different doctors that has been so helpful for me. And so I started really focusing on what I needed to do again um, around August this year. I, uh, now I will say this, I never stopped trying AJ the whole time that I was eating junkily. <laughs> Is that a word? I think it's a new word. <laughs> the, that whole time I would have four and five and six days of doing really well. And then I'd have a slip again and have a slip again. I have a really strong compulsive personality and it was, and you know, the cram cycle and all that stuff that we know about would take over. But around August, because that whole time I had, I do really well for a while and then I'd slip and then I'd fight to get back on track again. I would do really well for a while and I'd slip around August. It finally took, it's like, I, um, I was able to get on track and stay on track. And so I took off six pounds in August. I know it's not that much, but I was really grateful for it. <laughs> and then I took off 10 pounds in September. And so I'm finally on a good path. And I'll tell you what, I like to say um, I'm unexceptional and, I, and I'm back to being unexceptional. I was exceptionally fat. I was 436 pounds at five foot two. I was exceptionally unhappy and unhealthy. And now I'm unexceptional. I don't make any exceptions and I just stay on the path. And that is why I know I will get back. I'll get right back off. I feel like singing, you did it before and you can do it again. Isn't that? I love that. I, love that. I don't know that song, but I love it. But you know, it was a war song. We did it before and nobody's, I see this shows how old I am. We, it, <laughs> well, I was, I was typing. You're only one bite away from success. Absolutely. And I always think people will like, oh, I'm going to get back on track tomorrow or I'm, I ate one bite of one thing this morning. So now I have an excuse to eat all the things all day long. Well, what if you didn't do that? What if you just said, you know what? Oops. Didn't mean to do that, but I'm going to get right back on track with the very next bite. And you might just find yourself setting up a whole new paradigm for yourself where 
you don't have to be perfect. You just have to do your very best and keep on trying. So my, my theme song is, is a uh, tub thumping from Chumbawamba. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. <laughs> I love that. I, that's, um, that's what I say. Well, so the, the great thing about you is I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you're my inspiration things is like, even when you were scheduled to speak at the conference that got canceled, I said, I don't really care what you weigh because either way uh, you're going to have a story because you have a story about resiliency. So regardless of what the scale says, it doesn't define what you're able to offer people in terms of hope and resiliency. I love that. Thank you. And you know what? It's that love and acceptance. A lot of people, I got a lot of comments on my channel. They said, what did Chef AJ say? You know, I saw that and it pissed me off and I kind of wanted to like respond. You know what Chef AJ said? Nothing. You know what? She exactly. Chef AJ said nothing. And Chef AJ loves me and accepts me and is my friend. Right. And that is what, that is so important. We have to, because, you know, one of the things that happens when you do slip up is that you have this feeling like you need to hide. You need to isolate yourself. Well, guess what is the very worst thing for addiction? Addiction, we other, right? And so you have this tendency of like, I don't want anybody to know that I'm human and I messed up, you know, and, um, and so we do the exact, our instinct is to do the exact worst thing to, to, that will make it so we aren't helping ourselves. And so what I'm, what I propose is, um, to not, to, to come back into the light. I use my channel for accountability. I weigh in every week and that is helpful to me. I know not everybody's a fan of weighing in. I, I'm a big proponent of do what has worked for you consistently, right? Um, Not everybody is the same. And that has been something that has helped me a lot. And so I weigh in every Wednesday. I also like weigh in about what's going on in my life. Um, So I use that as as a metaphor for that. So I like to make recipes. I like to, um, I like to do my way in. And then I also like to just talk about things that have helped me on my journey, like doctors that I think are so inspiring. Um, man, I have been enjoying your daily, um, all of the wonderful doctors and just everybody you, you talk to everybody. You are the, you're the vegan Oprah. <laughs> I was going to say, I want to be like the vegan. That's what I was thinking. Like the, or the vegan Don King. Cause I really love promoting other people and having people find people. You know what I wanted to ask you, Heather, and I don't know if you know the answer to this is it could, could anybody have done anything while you were struggling? Because I just learned like from Dr. Lyle that you say nothing. I mean, if people ask you for help, then you help them, but you don't like, you know, go to people and say, Hey, you know, you know what I mean? I absolutely agree with Dr. Lyle about that because the truth is that the person is acutely aware of that, the fact that they've gained weight, right? Like it's not a surprise to them. And, um, it just puts more pressure, um, at a time when, when that's not helpful. Right. And so, um, one of the, I, you did the exact right thing. You just kept reaching out to me. You just were kind and accepting and let me know that if I needed anything that I could come, that I could come to you. And a lot of other people did too, you know, um, your people will rally around you. There's no shame in having tried but what do they say? Like, it's just proof that you tried, <laughs> right? So um, I will never give up. I have, I will never, um, I used to say, I'll never give up. I'll never give in. I am a little bit more humble now about the nevers, <laughs> but I will say um, a couple things that I'm proud of. I still have never had an animal product that I know well knowingly at all since um So that's one thing I would say is, you know, don't, 
I didn't go off of being vegan. So I'm really proud of that. I mean, I'm not, I know some people are, are plant-based eaters. You and I are actually ethical vegans. We're vegan for the animals and for the environment and for our own health and for people's health. And so that it was really important to me. Um, and then the other thing is just remember, you know, instead of take all that energy that you use kicking yourself and putting yourself down and use that energy instead to like, remember what was working for you. Right. And maybe you need to change it up. Maybe your life has changed a little bit. One of the things that happened to me is I had a strategy of, um, taking all of my healthy food with me to work. And then I'd be at work and all I would, and I wouldn't take any money with me. And so all I would have at work is whatever healthy thing, um, you know, my willpower would be strong in the morning. I'd have my big salad. I'd have my yummy soups and stews and chilies that I got out of chef AJ's cookbooks. Um, and that's all I'd have with me. And then I didn't have any money, <laughs> so I couldn't make any other choices that was working for me, you know, it worked for me for a really long time. I, I had to learn how to do that being at home during a pandemic, right? When the stress level was higher and I'm a good cook, Chef AJ, like I like the taste of our of my food. So one of the things that happened to me is just being home all the time. It was really easy to say, well, maybe a little of this, maybe a little of that. Um, so that's, that's one thing I've had to adapt to. And um, I want to learn, I said that I've learned a little of this and a little of that usually leads to a lot of this and a lot of that. Exactly. Because if one bite is good, then hey, one bite is even going to be better. <laughs> I love yeah. that saying from, I think it's Kay Shepard or, or somebody said it. the first bite is the only bite I can control or something like that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And especially if it's an addictive food. I really do believe in abstinence. Um, the sofas, the ones that get me like alcohol, just never been a problem. Oil kicked it to the curb, never looked back. I was so happy to find out from you about calorie density. And I was almost mad, you know, like I was like, you're telling me that a tablespoon of oil has the same amount of calories as like a half a piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> Uh, uh, of a small piece of chocolate cake. I'm just like oil. You don't even taste good. Why, you know, comp compared to all the delicious things that we can have. And so knowing that I can have a whole potato for fewer calories than one tablespoon of oil or whatever. So I just learned a whole lot. Those two were never a problem for me, but you know, sugar and flour. Um, I was dating both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, time to break up. Sugar was my best friend. Flour was my boyfriend. You know, um, yeah. So I'm I'm seeing a better crowd now. <laughs> yeah. I got all my friends around me. If you don't mind, show the pizza one more time because I'm going to have to get off because I'm I'm on I'm on again in a half hour with JP Absolutely. for the monthly Q and A, and I got to I got to eat a sweet potato or something. I but make sure you talk when you hold it, so because then Zoom will go to you. There we go. All right. That is incredible. It's a work of art. And so are you, Heather. And you got so many fans on. I hope you'll read some of the comments. You inspire so many people. And uh, I appreciate you coming on and making this extraordinary recipe and contributing actually another one to my book too. You also did your, your sushi, which is amazing. Maybe you'll come on next time and do sushi. Absolutely. I love you guys. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Take care. Bye.